Colt, speaking of adversity, right? And speaking of good people in that building, John, George, by the way, John and George were instrumental in the, in the coach church. It was really cool to see analytics guys uh, getting the shout out for that. They hire Shane Steichen. And I know, you know, we've done a little bit of work on the coaching side for, um, you know, for prospective clients and stuff. And, you know, Shane Steichen always does well in the ratings. And, and there's a couple of reasons why, right? So Steichen, just to give people a little bit of a background, he was the quarterback's coach for the Los Angeles Chargers in the Anthony Lynn era. Um, and Justin Herbert's rookie year, he took over as offensive coordinator, did wonderfully, right? Justin Herbert set rookie records in the NFL for, you know, basically uh, quarterbacks in their first year. Steichen was wonderful there. Um, got caught up in the Anthony Lynn firing, of course. And then so he goes to uh, Philadelphia. And as one wants to do, um, Nick Sirianni, who did not call plays in Indianapolis, wanted to call plays and sort of show his medal there. The Eagles struggled out of the gate um, in, in his first year as the coach. And to Sirianni's credit, he gave Shane Steichen the play calling duties about halfway through last year. And funny, they started winning and they've made the playoffs. And of course, a Super Bowl capped off by uh, an offensive performance that was amazing by the Eagles against the Chiefs. It's a shame they didn't win. Um, so this is one where at uh, opposite of Gannon, I think Steichen, you, you've seen the ascension and it's been almost completely monotone up uh, in, in his career. And, and I, I think about, you know, where this team is now. They're sort of in a similar position roster wise. They have DeForest Buckner who may or may not be traded. They have, you know, Quentin Nelson, who's very good, but the rest of the offensive line is porous. They have a great running back, um, some young tight ends who are good, wide receivers with Pittman, who's great, but not a ton of depth there. And they need a quarterback, and they need to, they need a quarterback soon. And um, so this is going to be a place where I think, much like the Eagles were in 2020, they're going to go ahead and draft one, and they're going to let Steichen develop what will now be his third quarterback, uh, on a rookie deal to heights that we've seen from Herbert and Hertz. And I, I'm bullish on it. I, I'm bullish on the Colts here. And I'm really happy that they made this decision because I think Steichen uh, is, going to be a, uh, is going to be a very good head coach. No, look, I, I completely agree with you. Without belaboring the point, you know, Chris Ballard coming off of veteran quarterback stuff from the very beginning, thinking he was going to ride a long, long journey with, with luck. And of course that didn't happen. That you're in a spot as a GM as, and, and your owner, and you're you're thinking, my God, we 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 have the fourth overall pick, right? And we're going to have an opportunity at one of the two best, whatever whatever happens there, and we're going to get the right guy to develop him, come hell or high water. And I think it's I think it's a really good move for them. Look, I have my thoughts. I, I wanted Dan there, of course, just be, because I wanted Dan Quinn somewhere. Um, you know, the defensive the defensive coach right now is not probably for that organization. And, and again, back to our earlier comment, Chris knows Chris has been lauded for many, many years, Chris Ballard on the way that he puts teams together. And he's got a really good eye and the quarterback situation has been a little bit elusive and it's important for him to jump back in and get the right one and the right one to lead him in it. And, and uh, it seems like it's Shane. Yeah, absolutely. So Matt Ryan right now, um, cap number next year of 35 million, but uh, pre June one, you can save 17 by letting him go. Um, post June one, no, they just don't have post June one because he only has that one year left, I believe. Yeah. So it's about 17, uh, to let him go. They do have building blocks. I mean, the thing about the, 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 the blessing and a curse of Ballard is that he, he does draft well, like the Darius mm -hmm. Shaquille Leonard, Darius Leonard. Um, you know, he's been great. Uh, you know, Nelson. And, and when you put it, it's kind of like the jets, when you put some good non quarterback players together, it can entice you to just try to get on the green from a quarterback perspective. When we've seen it blow up with them, Rivers was actually pretty damn good. I, you know, that was a really tough AFC that year. So they only got the seventh seed, but they gave the Bills a run for the money in the playoffs. But since then, it's been Wentz, it's been Ryan, um, and, and it just really hasn't worked. But that he's not, he's not untalented as an evaluator. And and their group, I, I, I believe in a lot, and they're really good in game. I think Frank Reich does a really good job. Obviously he, he, you know, his part of his coaching spawn was Sirianni who coached a really good game the other day in terms of fourth downs and stuff like that. So I think they will be okay there. Um, quarterback. Can I just Are, stay, can I stay there for one second? Because I think it's important that we touch on Jeff Saturday. 
Yeah, I, I am because I watched his was that what was that a Twitter whatever he did from the boat. Yeah, I, in, I didn't allow myself to watch that. I in think North Georgia, and you know, I I know this for a fact. The people that know Matt Ryan, he didn't say it to me, so I, I'm not, I'm not quoting him. But that was, of course, one of the very very toughest years of his of his career and probably life. The way that things went down, um, you know, and and then you flip that over to again back to to Chris Ballard as a GM. You need something fresh. You need something to pull that group out of that because there's a, there's a little bit of a cloud looming there. And Chris is the one to do it. So is Shane to do it. The quarterback is to do it because after that delivery, uh, you know, from Mr. Ursay, had a lot of people wondering the direction, of course. And I am I, I'm just glad that they stepped back and Chris had enough – enough insight, not only Chris, or enough push and drive to have, you know, his owner step back and realize that it's best they go in a different direction. Very, very important. And I think it's very important for a lot of the coaches out there. I'm sure the coaching profession, as you can imagine, they, they'll tip a glass or two when they're in Indianapolis over that one. Yeah, for sure. And it's not that, no, it's not that anybody doesn't like Jeff Saturday. I, I'm assuming he's a, you know, a delightful guy. He seemed like a great, he was a great player when he played and everything. Mm -hmm. It's just, you know, and it's it's a little bit with you know I feel this a little bit as an analytics guy, right? When you jump the line a little bit because you have a skill set that's different, like people do, you you do have to pay your respects to how the game has been built before you. And I think that there's an an aspect of when you jump the line that much, you have to you have to expect people to be to have some consternation towards uh, the process just because um there are people that work really hard and as you said like Jonathan Gannon he looks like a young guy but he's been in the league forever you know and he's yeah. finally getting his shot and you know and it's one of 32 imagine of course if one of those 32 were taken by somebody who didn't put in that that level of work uh that you did um it, you know there there's obvious frustration there i think you know and, and actually we shouted out JT O'Sullivan earlier um JT runs a, a YouTube page called the QB school uh, and it's fantastic if you if if after you're done listening and watching all of the Sumer Sports Show podcasts, uh, go ahead and give uh, uh, the QB School and JTO Sullivan listen. I actually watched the the CJ Stroud one that he had the other day, and I can't help but think that um, in that offense uh, that that they that they're going to run in, in Indianapolis. If you know for whatever reason Bryce Young goes, and then um, you know let's say Will Levitz goes. Mm -hmm. I think CJ Stroud would make a very good, I think he has the potential when you think about this, Thomas, like you have kind of the, the toolsy guys, the guys, the, the Mahomes is mm -hmm. and the Herberts and the, and then you have kind of the, and, and I, and I don't mean to damn him at all here, but like you have the Mac Jones types where you plug and play, right. They don't have a high ceiling, but you plug them and play them. And, and the roster is competent around them. They can be good faster than some of the toolsy guys are good because they already are red. They're limited but they're already ready to play. And I think Stroud is that guy in this draft. I think when you look at Anthony Richardson, very toolsy, very a ton of – like if you if you get him with the right coach in the right situation, he might be the best guy. Will Levitz is similar. But mm -hmm. they, they're they neither one I think are ready to play any, right now. I think Bryce Young might be. But again, um, you know, he, he has size issues and stuff. I think C.J. Stroud is the most ready-to-play guy. Does that mean he's the best guy? No, but I think – if he went to the Colts at four, um, they would be going places, I think, right away. I do, I do too. I, I'm really interested to see what he can do, of course, out the gate. And and I'm a big believer. Get that run game going, Chris and 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 Shane. Like, move it. Make sure that there's not a ton of pressure on him, you know, at, at, at jump start because it's obviously important. But 